Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be working on the Jacob's Ladder that we just built last week, doing some very interesting mods that I think you guys will like. I'm Alex. And I'm Avi. And you're watching the Renaissance Builder. So first off, today we're going to be talking about capacitors and how they relate to this. And I'd like to mention that I actually got this idea, this specific idea, from watching a video on the King of Random that Grant Thompson did a long time ago. So this idea came from him and this video is to honor his name. Now in his video he used coke bottles and tin foil to make capacitors. Now I don't have coke bottles but I thought you know what wine bottles actually make the perfect like flat surface and everything to do the same thing with. So that's what we're going to do today. I already have one here made that I was experimenting with in the whole system. So this I can demonstrate, you guys mentioned, in fact I can take this out of the circuit. So if I take this here capacitor out of the circuit by simply moving this away, then you'll notice it really doesn't do much. But as soon as I bring the capacitor into the circuit, the reason it's not doing much is because the gap that we've created here is not enough for the 12,000 volts to overcome. There's just not enough energy stored up in the transformers to overcome that gap. But, Avi, can you describe what a capacitor essentially does? Essentially, they store electricity. So, what the capacitor is going to do is it's going to take the electricity potential that is being generated by these 12,000 volt transformers and it's going to store it up and it's going to create more potential energy until it reaches the critical level where it has enough energy to actually overcome that gap. So let's try it out and see. So you'll notice that it's without doing anything but moving our terminal closer to the capacitor and turning it on, the capacitor was able to build up enough energy to discharge and overcome the gap that we have there. And once the gap was created, once the gap was bridged, then the hot plasma was able to carry the 12,000 volts the rest of the way. So it makes a pretty interesting combination. So let's go over how exactly we're going to make this here capacitor. All right, Avi, can you explain to us the steps to making this here homemade capacitor? Yeah. So first, you want to take all the stickers and paper off the bottle so that we have a clean glass. Secondly, you want to make a center terminal out of foil, and then you want to wrap the entire bottle in aluminum foil as flat as possible, and then you want to fill it with salt water. That's pretty much it. It's really not that complicated. So let's go ahead and get started making our capacitor. Okay, so here we have the bottle that we've already cleaned off the sticker, so it's a nice clean piece of glass. We've also rinsed out the inside so that there's no schmutz on the inside as well. So what we're going to do first, now that we have the stickers, well the first part is pulling the stickers off. So second part is we're going to take this here foil and make our center electrode. Now. It needs to stick out, so we need to have this thing at least that high. And I just bumped the camera. We still got an angle? Yep. So we're going to cut this. Then we're just going to fold it over continually until we get... doesn't have to be pretty, doesn't have to be neat. All we need is a rod. Now we can take it and twist it up a little bit, give it some, some strength. And there's our rod. It goes right down the middle. So the part we need to do after that is now we're going to wrap the unit in foil. So for that we're going to Take some more foil off. Now, this unit, first we want to start with a straight line, so let's cut ourselves a straight line for the bottom. Now 
then you can lay the bottle down and get an idea of how big. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, so cut a little extra because we're going to trim it off to suit once it's on. Perfect. Now it's as easy as take the shiny side, you want the shiny side out because this here wax, the dull side actually has a wax insulator. So you can take a piece of tape if you want and tape it to the bottle, but I find that to be superfluous. So go ahead and wrap it up just like that. And then just take simple scotch tape and fasten it. Just like that. Put a piece at the bottom to hold that in place. Cool. Now we're going to take our scissors, open them up, and we're going to trim the top so that we got a nice clean line at the top. Well, it was supposed to be a clean line. There we go. That's better. Now it's okay to take a piece of tape. Just fasten this top edge as well. Just like that. So that's what you have. Center electrode and your wrapped aluminum foil around there. Now we have to fill it with salt water. Now Uvi was kind enough to grind us a good bit of salt here in our pitcher. So we're gonna go ahead and fill this up with water and mix the salt up to make our salt water. Now I figure a little extra salt doesn't hurt anything. The more saturated it is, the more it will hold. So whatever doesn't dissolve is fine. It'll just stay in the bottom of the pitcher and we'll wash it out later. So our final step to making this here capacitor is to pour our salt water mixture in the bottle. Would certainly help if I had better pouring skills or maybe even a funnel. There we go. Now you only need water up to the level of the foil so we're going to dump some out here. There we go. Drop in our center electrode. And there's our homemade wine bottle capacitor. All right, so here we have the homemade capacitor that we just made. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wire this capacitor in parallel with our existing capacitor. The idea being is that our capacitors are storing energy and our gap here actually makes, causes the capacitor to store up enough energy until it is possible to jump that gap. So if we double the energy storage with another capacitor, then we should be able to jump a bigger gap. Now, first thing I'd like to do is test our homemade capacitor. So I have here a meter that is capable of testing capacitors. So I have our 30 microfarad capacitor sitting right here. Put this over so you guys can see it. So this is a 30 microfarad capacitor. So I'm just gonna clip on one lead Hit that. Uvi, what does that say? 30. So 300. No, that is 30. 30.0 three zero zero microfarads. So that's a good capacitor. But that's 30 microfarads. 30 microfarads is, what is it, 300th of a farad? Microfarads, it takes 100 microfarads to make up a farad, so, well, anyhow, it's a lot smaller than one farad. <coughs> now, to throw a couple numbers out here for you. Just for the sake of science, because, you know, the capacitor video went so well. Ooh, that probably shouldn't be over there. So, when we talk about microfarads, we're talking about a measure of a capacitor. Now, how we get that measurement? A couple terms for you. Avi, what's a coulomb? It is a uh, collection of electrons. 
So it, it's a bunch of electrons. Yeah. So a coulomb, to be specific, one coulomb is 6.25 billion billion electrons. It's a number bigger than I can comprehend. So it's just a lot of electrons. Avi, what's an amp? It's the flow of electricity. It's great. Great explanation. It's very simple. An amp is electrical flow. In fact, you'll probably have already seen my video explaining the difference between volts, amps, and ohms. So one amp. One amp equals one coulomb a second. So that's 6.25 billion billion electrons passing one second, or every second is one amp. Kind of puts it into perspective, huh? Avi, what is a farad? It's a collection of coulombs. Sort of. So one farad is one amp per second at one volt. So if we have a potential difference of one volt, one farad will give us one amp in a second, which is, if this is one farad at a potential difference of one volt, and I'm saying potential difference of one volt, that means zero one side, one volt on the other, then we will get 6.25 billion billion electrons pass through the electrode in one second. That's one farad. So anyhow, that's enough for the scientific numbers and stuff. Essentially, we can store a bunch of electrons here. So because we measured this here, 30 microfarad, which is much smaller than one farad, Believe it or not, one farad is actually quite a lot. But we measured 30 microfarads on that one. Avi, I want you to tell me what this equals. One. One what? Farad? Nope. That was worth a shot. It is one <laughs> nanofarad. Nano is a hundredth of a micro. So this capacitor that I'm holding here, a 30 microfarad capacitor, is 300, 30, 30, 100, 3, 30, is it 30, 30 is not a word, it's 3,000. Yeah. 3,000 times more powerful than this capacitor. <laughs> Just to put that into perspective. These aren't very strong capacitors, but they still do a job. We're still working with 12,000 volts. It's still very dangerous. So anyhow, with all that aside, let's get to wiring this thing in. So the first thing I need to do is we need to wire in our capacitors in parallel. So that means that the capacitors are not in series. They're not one after another. They are together. Like, look at it like uh, you're holding your girlfriend's hand, walking down the sidewalk side by side is parallel, but if you're holding your girlfriend's hand and you're walking down the sidewalk single file, one behind the other, that's series. Make sense? Yeah. All right, we're gonna trim this here. Oop, trimmer's over here. The other thing I wanna do because I have two, all right, this, this, this. because I have two sets of uh, jumpers here, two sets of electrodes, I want to use one set of electrodes as our spark gap, which means I need to wire these things together. So what I need to do, all right, so that's wired together trim this off so it's not quite so ungodly. This wire can go here. Now I need to take these two to here. Alright, so I need to take a wire, wrap a wire around there, take it here, wrap a wire around there. Alright. So now I'm just going to literally wrap This wire around this capacitor. Just like that. 
that. So it goes through the capacitor, through the capacitor to this electrode, and to here, to here. All right, that should work. Cool. Now, now the key to it is I'm going to take these and create. A gap. Now the trick is we got to play with it and see how big of a gap we actually need to jump across there. All right, you ready? Yeah. Is that legitimate lightly? Yeah, it is. What do you think? That's pretty cool. Right? That is pretty freaking cool. It's also cool. really scary. Why? Because I feel like I'm going to get electrocuted. Nah, just don't touch it. Thanks. Actually, here's something cute to do. So if I, if I set my multimeter to AC voltage, the closer I get, I'm actually getting like three four volts out of atmosphere off of this thing. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? It's pretty cool. Right? Yeah. All right. All right. You are lighting on fire. That's what I was hoping for. What I wanted. You want to see how fire yeah, wanted, yeah. affects this? <laughs> All right. For starters, it doesn't usually do a whole lot down here. It just kind of holds the arc because it's it's so much easier for it to cross the fire, right? Mm -hmm. Now watch when it does up here. Is that not neat or what? That was sick. It just it like stays there, basically. So that's because the fire actually creates a conduit of lower resistance air. Mm -hmm. So because the resistance of the air in the fire is lower than the surrounding air, it just says, screw it, we're going to go across there. Path of least resistance. Alright guys, so this was fun. It's pretty crazy. And uh, we enjoyed, enjoyed making all this. Like, this is awesome. And there's more. I've got some other crazy, like, crazy diodes and much stronger capacitors to add to this whole combination to make this even more exciting. So I want to end this on a note to say thank you Grant for everything that you did in inspiring all of us to make our own videos, to do our own projects. It was a blessing to have had you 
as an influence in, in the world. So thank you. And uh, and thank you everybody for watching. <coughs> this is uh, this has been exciting. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed and make sure you hit that bell icon so you can see the future videos when they come out. So again, I'm Alex. I'm Avi. And you've watched the Renaissance Builder. You guys have a good night. Bye-bye. I just noticed it ripples the air when it like hits the top. Yeah, it sucks. It's actually sick. <laughs> That's rad, bro.